Paris Rip, and I'm here with my friend Nick Ortner, New York Times bestselling author of The Tapping Solution, and I am here talking to Nick about his money love story as part of the launch of the money of whatever my book is called, Money of Love Story, <laughs> <laughs> where I'm, I'm talking to some of my friends because I want this conversation of sharing our own money journeys to be more public because, you know, Nick, you're a public person. And if you and other people who are in that position also share openly, then more people will get inspired to do the same and have more loving, conscious interactions with their money. So that's the name of the game here. Beautiful. So first of all, I'd love to know um, what you learned about money growing up. Kind of what was the environment like around money for you as a kid? Yeah, great question. You know, we um, lived in Connecticut, middle class, I would, I would call us. The, the town we lived in tended to be sort of upper middle class, and we were on the lower end of that town. You know, we weren't the hoodlums of the town, but, you know, and it's funny how I can say all these things. Like, we know all these things about money, yeah. really. In the same way that we know in seventh grade, if we were in the most popular tier of people, or the second most popular, that we know this about money, yeah. right? Um, so... So growing up, you know, very comfortable, obviously. I mean, I think for most of the people listening to this, they're likely had, there's no lack of food or shelter. Um, but certainly my friends and their families had a lot more money than I ever did, you know. And, uh, and you know, you, you just, again, like the property, you know that, you know. Um, my parents would do well financially for a couple of years, and then it would seem to be tighter. They were big, you know, up and down, a big, you know, shift in the financial status of the family. And, and things were tight. I mean, I remember not doing things because of money-related reasons, and my friends were able to do them, you know. Yeah. And uh, not the end of the world, but these are the things that you learn and that you yeah. know, that there is limit and that there is lack and that there are levels of abundance. Right. And did your parents talk about money openly? Did they teach you guys anything about it? Uh, you know, I don't think it was anything conscious that I can think of. I mean, there's certainly dinner table discussions, and you just you felt the financial pressure, um, for sure. But it wasn't like, here, I'm going to teach you how to... I think my dad probably tried to teach me how to balance a checkbook when I was in high school. You, know? you were probably like, whatever, so dad. Great teacher, so, but if we were paying any attention. But no, it wasn't, you know, certainly in school. I mean, I always laugh about the fact that you take all these courses in high school, I mean, so many, eight hours a day, however long, yeah. supposed to learning stuff, and there's not an ounce of how to balance a checkbook and mm -hmm. financial education. There's nothing about stocks. There's nothing, I mean, I think there was a business class that some people took, and it was like 20 people in the whole school took this business class, and I don't even know what they taught there, but it's, it's kind of shocking that, you know, the focus on math, science, and, and English and all things that I understand are important, but they need to be balanced out a little better with, uh, you know, financial education. Absolutely. Because I don't remember algebra, and I don't need algebra on a daily basis, but I do need to know how to, you know, uh, look at my bank accounts and understand what I'm doing financially. Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely, and especially running a business. So what have so, you found the most challenging for you over the years when it comes to money? It's a great question. Um, you know, I think it's been... The challenge that I've seen for myself personally in the last decade has been, I, I did that ebb and flow thing just like my parents did, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it was really successful financially for a couple of years and then massively in debt and then successful again and massively in debt and now I've been on a nice ride of about five years of no debt, you know? Nice. Uh, and I think I'm done with that roller coaster. I, I can't imagine, you know, my mindset has shifted so dramatically in terms of how I run my business and the personal decisions I make. Um, but the biggest challenge, I think, for me has been, you know, the individual one of feeling confident in being financially successful, feeling confident in being the, willing to say, yes, I'm very financially successful, feeling confident in standing out and saying, I'm standing out in the world, you know, I'm putting out a book, I'm doing all these things. Um, it's, it's been a special challenge within the community that I usually talk to, which is, you know, the tapping community, spiritual community, self-help healers, massage therapists, you know, because as you know, there's an undercurrent throughout that whole community of lack, you know, of uh, we're doing things to help the world, and they're so positive, and they're so great, so we shouldn't make any money for doing that, right. you know, and it's a problem, and I've talked about it publicly before, and I've, and I've done what, my part to change that, 
metric because it, I really think it's one of the things that really holds the community back. You Absolutely. Know? That you see someone who's passionate about being a coach or being a tapping therapist or doing something and to really help people and they don't allow themselves to charge what they need to to be financially successful, so then they have to go back to their job in the corporate world doing nothing, you know, and not being able to help and, you know, um, so we need to charge more. We need to value our services. We need to grow things. You know, I have a, a multi-million dollar business right now and sure, that's great for me and I'm very well off financially and I'm happy, but the most exciting thing is I get to donate literally hundreds of thousands of dollars to charities I support. I get to hire people, I get to some fun research, you know, I, I get to actually take those dollars that were then sitting somewhere else and move them into a you know, positive sphere. So it's, it's a conversation that has to change and, and as a community, we need to start accepting that, that look, let's, I always say, let's root for someone to be a billionaire in this industry, you know? Yes. What if somebody was a billionaire teaching medica meditation, not medication, right? The opposite, <laughs> Medi We have plenty of those. We have plenty of medication billionaires, but imagine a yeah. meditation billionaire. People go, well, he's spiritual. That's not spiritual. Are you kidding me? How about running an ad during the Super Bowl showing the benefits of meditation? You know, the influence that, that we could have. revolutionary. Open up to that possibility. I love, I love the picture that you're painting there. I, I'm so on board with you. And I'd love to know from you going from those boom and bust years, and we did an episode yeah. of Glimpse TV for the Tapping Solution, and... You, you told your story, and so those of you listening, you can find that episode. Um, the link will be below the video. But I, I would love to know what were some of those mindset set shifts that have changed so that now in this five last five years, um, you've been debt-free and doing really well, and you don't see that changing in the future. You see that that will yeah. be on the up. Yeah. Well, I've certainly done a lot of personal work using tapping yep. and meditation and other just Really asking myself, you know, what does it feel to stand out in the world? You know, because maybe ten years ago, if I make a statement like I'm I'm financially successful and well off, there could be a part of me that felt guilty or felt that it was wrong. Well, I tapped on that. I mean, I did the tapping process to to clear that out, to clear that out from my body, so I can feel confident in it. In it, and and I'm constantly working on it. I mean, there's there's levels of everything, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. I mean, it's just it's just a process in terms of. In terms of the debt, you know, that was a real mindset shift for me where, and I think, you know, in my 20s, I was probably more interested in, you know, spending money on this and spending money on that and just living the high life. And not that I was crazy, but, you know, you also get to be in a, sometimes you can watch The Secret or think different things that said, well, I need to act that way, so I need to act abundant, right? Which Okay, I get the premise, and there's times when I play with that, but some people take that the whole wrong direction, and I think in some ways I did. Well, I, I'll just act abundant, which means everything's going to work out, and you know, and then I'm spending money, spending money, spending money, and now I'm in debt, you know. Um, so the mindset now, especially for me, for debt, I mean, debt is not an option. It's not in the sphere of us making business decisions. I mean, we're always cash flow positive. We don't overhire, you know. We we, we expand at levels that are comfortable yeah. for us. Um, in terms of my personal finances, I, any penny I make that's extra, I put it towards my house. You know, my number one goal is to pay off my house. Yeah. And I have a low interest rate, and people go, well, you know, you can really do better in the stock market or this, that, and the other. I don't care. I want to own my house. That's you know? right. And that's your that. value. That's, that's what it. feels good to you, right? Yeah. I yeah. want to have that security. I paid off my cars. Like, I, you know. Interest is not fun. No, right? interest, interest. <laughs> interest is not fun. And so your money love story is really about, is it about security? Is, is that mm -hmm. your, is that what feels good? Is that your, like, what would you say for you in your life? What is the purpose of money? Yeah, and that's great. Yeah, it's certainly security and, and a foundation. And it's not security from the place of fear, right? You can go, I need security because I'm scared that things are going to go wrong. I don't have that fear. I, I think I have the faith in myself, my ability to put value into the world, yeah. because that's what it is. You know, the way, it's not about finding that, it's how much value can you put into the world. And I know that with the last 15 years of experience that I have and what I've been doing, and as an entrepreneur, as, an, uh, as a consultant, as a speaker, leader, teacher, I can put, I can give people value, all right? So if tapping stops working 
for some change in the universal laws, and that all disappeared, <laughs> right? I know that I could do something else because I yeah. could provide value for people. I could say, you know what, I can help you this, I can help you that. So the thing, I think people tend to make money just so external, right? It's like, okay, well, I'm going to need to get money, bring it in. And for me, and where the real transition comes is when you have so much self-worth and so much value that says, I can give value to people, then you're just never going to be in lack, you know, because you, you know that wow. you're going to be able to give people value. So I tell people, instead of saying, look external, well, I can do this, I can do that, look internally. How do you make yourself better? Yeah. The, the more you make yourself stronger, healthier, happier as an individual, the more likely money is going to flow into the world, simply because you're going to be providing more value. You know? I love it. So I think that shift from that real external focus to the internal focus is what, and then that's the place where you're at peace because you're not attached to the money. You know, you don't you don't need it for ego purposes. I'm not trying to make more money because I have to prove it to somebody. Right. You know, it's like, well, okay, if I make ten million dollars a year, then I'll be worth it. You know. Yeah. It, just irrelevant to me. If I make $100,000 next year or $60,000 next year because I decide to do nothing and <laughs> do some consulting stuff and get some book royalties, then that's, that's awesome. it. You know, I'm not tied to that as my self-worth. And, yeah. and that's, that's a big transition and a fantastic one because when you get there, it feels so good too. You just, that's, to me, that's when you get out of the rat race. You, yes. know? you don't get out of the rat race just from having money because you can have your house paid off and you can have all these things, but if you're still longing externally for having to do these things to prove your self-worth and your value. You know, my longing for expansion now is I have the Tap and Solution Foundation and there's big dreams, big goals there. I, w I want to know how to fund that, you know, how to create security and stability there and growth there and then expansion of the message and it's a good place to be. Yeah. Oh, it's so awesome. It's so awesome to hear. And so for those listening who aren't familiar with Nick's story, I just want you to know um, he, ha you know, you've gone through ups and downs and, and you've created this life that you have and this ability to help others and add so much value through your own personal work and willingness to do the, to do tapping on limiting beliefs and to, to look at those areas of yourself and of your life that maybe needed a little love and attention. So that is something that anybody can do because yeah. like there's no reason you know you're awesome I love you and there's no reason that you can have this and somebody listening can't because the tools are there available to you whether it's tapping you know whether it's whatever else you choose to use um, that you anyone can have that and that's why your story is so inspiring thank you yeah especially in this day and age you know maybe 50 years ago we can have a debate about the ability to climb the social ladder for lack yep. of better work to be abundant or to, you know there's so, there were more barriers to entry it's just the reality of it yeah this day and age with the internet i mean finding find, you know if you don't can't afford the internet you go to the library and yep. there's free internet there you know there are no barriers to entry when it comes to knowledge it's so and, true you know, that there's means so many possible. free resources just Google yeah. it, whatever you want. <laughs> Just Google it. Yeah. Google it. Google it and listen and fill your brain with it. I mean, if there's one thing that I can say that I did in the last 15 years on a consistent basis is I filled my brain to the brim with information like this, with these kind of discussions. Yeah. You know, I had a friend who would joke that I had right out of college. She would joke that my headphones were glued to my ears because walking around the house, doing dishes, doing stuff, I was listening to stuff. I mean, there are countless hours in the day where if you put that in your brain as opposed to nothing, and it's okay, it doesn't mean you have to do all the time, sometimes you want to sit and think, and, you know, but, uh, or, you know, talk radio or the TV or you know, whatever it is, I filled my brain with this information and you put enough good stuff in, it starts coming back out. That's so simple and elegant and beautiful. If you put enough good stuff in, it starts coming back out. It's terrible. It's inevitable. Thank you, Nick, so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. So if you want to know more about Nick, go to thetappingsolution.com and definitely grab a copy of the book. It's phenomenal. It's so well written and really practical. And there are specific tapping. I don't know if you would call them tapping meditations or tapping... Tapping scripts. Tapping, scripts, yes. Yeah, yeah, scripts for financial abundance specifically. So you can get those there. And if you want to know more about Money, a Love Story, head over to moneyalovestory.com. Free with your purchase is a course I'm teaching called A Course in Having Enough. And I'll be having guest experts on Marianne Williamson, Amanda Steinberg, and Barbara Stanny. So you can find out about that 
at moneyandlovestory.com and you can also find all the other money love stories there. So thank you, Nick, so much for being here. I really appreciate you sharing your wisdom and your story. You're welcome. Thanks for having me, Kate. Thank you.